That helps our live stream, uh, so we're uh, we're glad to help out the folks who are watching this one. Uh, but we've come here to do something different. This is Christ the King Sunday, uh, usual Sunday for us. Uh, so we celebrate uh, who is really in charge, and we remember whose whose we are uh, as, as children of God and followers of Jesus Christ. So let me invite you to stand as we begin to worship. Uh, this is to be our call to worship. God lives life to those who live in the shadows. God offers stillness amid the turbulence of our time. We live in covenant with God, who gives us the rest. We are eager to give our best to God in return. By the tender mercies of our God, we beat for worship. God has brought the dawn of a new day for our use. Praise God for signs and wonders all around us. Praise God for peace and reconciliation. 
Let us join together in the opening prayer. We worship you with gladness, O God, our shepherd, for you have gathered us as your flock. You have sent a mighty Savior who has demonstrated among us the power of love. Send your Spirit now to remind us of your gifts and to strengthen us for our tasks. Amen. Our first uh, hymn is uh, Rejoice the Lord is King, 715. God summons us to a time of repentance and reconciliation. Let us admit our unfaithfulness that we might be restored to the flock. Join with me. Many times we have rescued us, O God, yet we continue to wander away from your vision for us. We do not respond when you summons us for the perilous highways we have chosen. For our words and deeds deny the faith we proclaim. God of nations, deliver us from his faithfulness and acknowledge our sin. Forgive us our own faiths. Amen. Take a moment and take your individual petitions to God. We are citizens of God's realm, where Jesus reigns in the triumphant power of love. Give joyful thanks to God, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints. Amen. We come now to a time of, uh, of joys and concerns that we lift up to one another, to God, as we have something we'd like to uh, share this morning. Darlene and I were watching. Last yesterday, the 
Coach Joe Carter, my, my brother Emerson, his wife Patty celebrate the sixty seventh wedding anniversary. Yeah. That, that's pretty long. That's pretty long. <laughs> well, we yeah. celebrate that. They get that. That's a wonderful, wonderful time right there. We celebrate that long faithfulness and the celebrations of life, uh, making a little uh, more joyful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. our prayers. Emerson and I were roommates down at AM. Oh. And he just slipped away and didn't tell me he was going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you didn't need to be in the loop. <laughs> Mom's probably getting out of the hospital today. I called her this morning and she thinks she's being prescribed. Um, oh, that's good too. She's, uh, she's doing better. Oh, yeah. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. I've also taken her cigarettes away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was told, and I don't know who by this morning. Charlene Revis has been in the hospital in Lane Passage. She is now in uh, Lane Passage Rehab, which is the uh, nursing facility and rehabilitation facility behind the hospital and I do know I, I talked to her Debbie um, has has had cataract surgery um, it did not go well she has had major bleeding in that eye but um, Family, they've gone back and had a second surgery to try to get some of the blood and stuff away from where it's not supposed to be. And I suppose she's either with her daughter or they're with her. I mean, she's not alone. So those were two, that's two reports that I remember. All right, for, uh, for Charlene Revis and for Debbie, we're going to really lift them up uh, in their difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayers. Well, the community garden has been uh, a success, but we're just about to the end of the year. Uh, we have a few vegetables now but at, in, in there. You're welcome to take what you want, but this will probably be the last day. And uh, the first, the very first freeze, even before the freeze, it got too cold for the zinnias, so the flowers are gone for the year. Well, we enjoyed the, the flowers being here place wild every week, and, the, and uh, I, I'm sure that somebody enjoyed the jalapenos. <laughs> Not me, but, the, <laughs> but they have been uh, they have been quite an addition. So we appreciate that uh, for God's abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Here yeah, our prayers. Prayers. Dad's doing kind of a little better, so so, and there he's supposed to uh, be able to right now. Send it back to San Salvador on Monday. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Our prayers. And report from Toby and Vicki, I'll just read it. Because uh, I, I called Vicki this morning to say, oh, I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> I said, Good morning. Can we have a report on you two for church? She said, Quite honestly, not a lot of improvement. I'm still weak and sick in my stomach with no appetite. Sophie is still not sleeping because of pain in his back, but every day will get better. Cooper is 100% and shot two balls yesterday. Thanks for the prayers. <laughs> All right, for, uh, for Toby and Vicki for their healing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayers. Now, I, I want to say that we have met our quota for sick people. <laughs> Absolutely. So nobody else is allowed to get sick. <laughs> Well, I have a good report. Kayla flew back from Florida on Tuesday, but with the grace of God, she got here because she left her wallet at her dad's house. <laughs> and TSA actually let her fly because she knew all the right answers. She said it was because she was left-handed. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm just saying that for the grace of God, she got back. She probably bat, uh, uh, batted her eyes and <laughs> flirted with them a little bit. Well, she did make it back, and her cat did come home after running away. 
Yeah. For safe travels uh, for the past and also safe travels for all those who will be traveling uh, this next week for Thanksgiving. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Any others? Let's take a moment and put ourselves into the presence of God. Lord God, creator of the universe and the goal of history come to remember who is in charge. We think we're in charge, but we're really not. We think other people control us, but they really don't. You are the power behind all of existence. And we are grateful. We would have messed it up. As a source of all life, you turn, we turn to you to show us which way to go each day. We turn to you for wisdom beyond our own. We turn to you for courage greater than we can manage. To receive these gifts, we have to be in touch. That's what we're doing here. We lift up our needs. You know that before we ask, you know our needs even when we don't. Lead us into life. We pray for our friends. Their needs are great. We need them back in our fellowship. We pray for those who do not know. We pray for those people who we don't know. They need love and community and security and wellness as well as we do. We pray for those who we might disagree and may not even like, for they are your children as well. Pick us up. Take us somewhere new. Send us on the adventure of faith. We pray in Jesus' strong name when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's hear from uh, the prophet Jeremiah. Our scripture reading this morning is Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. This is the restoration after exile. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, Israel will live in safety, and this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our responsive reading is Psalm 46. 
on page 780 in the hymnal. We'll use our responses different from the ones in the book, and the words are from verse 10 and verse 9. Be still and know that I am God, who makes wars cease. And it goes like this. Be still and know that I am God, who makes wars cease. Everybody now. Be still.
Let's sing together. Feel my cup. Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood up, watching, but the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanging there kept deriding him and saying, You are not the if you are not the Messiah, are you not the Messiah? And they save yourself and us. But the others rebuked him, saying, No. Do, do not fear, do, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have condemned, will condemn justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then Jesus said, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, I truly I tell you, today. You will be with me in paradise. The word of the Lord, the word of God for people of God. Thank you, God. God. <clears throat> Just recently, we took an exercise in democracy. We voted. Now, we haven't really decided what we did because some of them can't seem to count everything. But there were people who wanted to be your representatives in states, in counties, in cities, and in the nation. And they would do anything to get elected. They would condemn the other person's character, their intelligence, uh, their morality. Sometimes they would start rumors and somehow out, out, out law, lies. Anything to get elected. But now, they have to do something. They have to come through with what they promised. And some of them, we hope, can't do that. <laughs> but they're going to discover that there's other forces involved. There are other things they did not anticipate, that uh, they didn't expect. There will be crises that they didn't uh, know were coming. Uh, there will be a, a balancing act between uh, representing the people of your area and trying to do the best that your moral stance or your best in intelligence is on those issues. Sometimes they don't uh, mesh up very well. And that's not even counting their weaknesses and their strengths. They've got to figure out what they're going to do. There's another election. Election that didn't get the front page of the paper, that didn't have the reporters running around trying to interview people. The Methodist Church elected bishops. Maybe just as important or more important than the other election, because these bishops will be the spiritual leaders of millions of Methodists, caring about their spiritual well being the state of their souls. Leaders are important. Jeremiah thought so. 
Esau in his history as a prophet that as the leaders go, so goes the nation. Sometimes the leaders were able to, to spiritually energize people. They, they herded them together. They put them in worship. They connected them to God. They made them consider the people that were left out, the people that were the most vulnerable that did not have a voice. He helped, and they helped them treat others with justice. And the nation went well. But more often than not, they did not. The leaders were lax about their worship. They didn't pay that much attention to the poor. They cared more about the wealthy and the powerful. They more cared more about perpetuating their own power than somebody else's. They either intentionally or accidentally neglected the worship of God. And things did not go well. I don't think that God punishes people for their bad decisions, even leaders. But I do believe that God set up a, a, a kind of a, a social uh, economy in which uh, when people go off track, when they lose their moral compass, uh, when they lose their connection to God, things fall apart. Nations fall apart. People separate. We want to have good leaders that pull people together. Now Jeremiah said that they know that good leaders won't last, just like bad leaders don't last. And he says ultimately there will be one leader that will come out of the God's heritage in the, in the people of God, and he will lead with equity, he will lead with justice, he will lead with compassion, he will lead with love. He will do everything fairly. He will be a servant rather than one who demands service. Now, Jeremiah may, Jeremiah may have in, in mind uh, the king that follows the rule of kings and does what most kings do. But as Christians, we have a different perspective. We believe that that king was Jesus Christ. That, that would be the one who would ultimately rule. Now, it would not be apparent. It would not be apparent when Jesus was born in a manger, in a barn, in a feed, in a place in the feed trough, where the people who were invited were not important people uh, as the world sees them, but shepherds. He would not be seen so important or so keenly when they took the Romans, took him and put him on a cross and crucified him and they derided him. He won't seem like a king, except for one man who was on the cross with him. When you come into your kingdom, remember me. It's important who the leaders are. We ought to look at leaders and elect people that are more like Jesus who care about the poor, who care about justice, who care about God and people's relationship to God, who care about the moral character of the citizen. We ought to elect people like that. But we also ought to take Jeremiah's warning that they too will fail. We We, ought to, we can't do a lot about those kind of leaders, but we can do something about another kind of leader. And that's you and me. You are a leader, whether you think so or not. There are times when you take charge. There are people who are looking to you and will follow where you lead. You need to take that seriously. As a gift from God. We also realize, like all human beings, we too will fail at times. There's only one who's fully trustworthy. There's only one who holds the power. And on Christ the King Sunday, we remember that that's Jesus. 
That's the one we can trust. That's the one we can follow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we feel God's presence and hear God's word, we affirm our faith. Let's remember 881 in the back of the hymnal. Let me invite you to stand so we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and stood at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to chance to break in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. strong so you put a lot in <laughs> Heavenly Father we thank you for your son Jesus who is the one who we can trust the one who we can follow the one true Lord and Master we thank you for the leaders that we have we ask your grace upon them we thank you for this offering that it might do the work of the church the ministry of Jesus Christ
as our refuge and strength, our help in trouble. Christ is our Savior who welcomes us to God's room. Let us sing our blessing. Thank you.